It's easy to get caught up in the hype of buying off-plan property in a foreign country, especially when it promises a strategic location, spectacular views and high rental yields. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? But it's important to exercise caution and not be too hasty in making foreign property purchases, especially if you're unfamiliar with the country and market. And to give us tips in mitigating or for mitigating the risk of buying real estate overseas, we have Andrew Batt, International Group Editor for Property Guru. Andrew, thank you so much for coming in Good and morning. speaking to us uh, this morning. Uh, overseas property, sometimes it seems more attractive because comparative to where you are, especially if you're here in Singapore, it seems so much cheaper and more affordable. But there are concerns, aren't there? There are concerns indeed, that's right. Um, the number of people buying in Singapore has declined and we feel that a lot of those transactions are now happening overseas. You only have to look on a weekend where there can be anything up to 25 individual property exhibitions for overseas property and as the intro said it's easy to get taken in by the hype and that's all it is it's hype the agents and the developers have a job to do um, you have to keep a level head you have to know what you are signing up to and where are the markets that are, that are sort of hot at the moment, if you like, around Southeast Asia? Well, I could say download our latest e-book <laughs> from our website, propertyguru.com.sg. Okay, but um, enough of the plugging. But enough of the but plugging. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tokyo and Japan seems to be incredibly popular uh, by the number of exhibitions that are happening. Malaysia and Iskandar has come back a little bit. Um, there are now cooling measures being imposed by the Malaysian government. Um, Thailand would have been up there. I think a lot of people have looked at Thailand and what happened at the end of May and probably delayed their decision there. Australia and London are always popular because they are safe haven destinations for property investors. Mm. But regionally, I think Japan is, is um, picking up and okay. probably... Why is that, do you think? Is that just because the economy is uh, sort of recovery? Abenomics. Abenomics. Is what I'm told. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what are the common mistakes people make when they uh, invest in one of these overseas properties then? Ultimately, they don't know what they're buying. They buy it from a uh, exhibition here in Singapore, having never been to the country. Is that an absolute no-no? I mean, you should really go and inspect the property. My personal view, yes. Um, you should know what you're buying. You should actually know the location. You should look at the surroundings, um, get a feel, maybe t two or three times, two or th three different times during the day, so you see what it's like first thing in the morning if you've got a traffic jam right outside your, your proposed uh, development, or if you're at night time, if it's a noisy neighbourhood, then at least you know. These are things that, that developers and agents are probably not going to tell you. Mm. Um, don't get taken in by offers of guaranteed returns. My feeling is if you're buying something in a good location, it's a good property, you don't need the guaranteed um, returns because your property... Is it, that a warning sign if you're offered a guaranteed return? No, it's not a warning sign because as a first-time overseas investor it's almost like a safety blanket. You know that for the first two or three years you're going to get income but the questions you need to ask is what's going to happen after the guarantee period expires? What can you expect? What's the resale market? Um, we're having that question posed quite a lot with student accommodation, um, particularly from the UK, which is very, very hot. Um, it's been hot over the last couple of years in Singapore. And you have to look and see what the resale market is for that particular um, development, that particular product class, because it's so new that there isn't a resale market as yet. Mm. What other questions should you be asking when you're looking to buy property overseas? You should take legal advice, your own independent legal advice. Um, Is this because the laws in different countries will correct. be different, obviously? And you need correct, to yes. You need to know the laws, uh, the taxes. What is your total investment? The headline figure of $200,000 may not be what you actually end up paying because there is things like sinking funds, maintenance fees, stamp duties, stamp duties, and then getting your profits, if you have profits, getting them out. 
there could be a uh, capital gains tax to be, to be taken into account as well. That's why you really need a lawyer and a tax advisor. We always recommend that at any of our shows that we have um, because it is important. It's not just the headline figure mm. that you need to look at. Mm. So independent legal advice aside from that which you're being offered at a particular show or by a particular developer. And you should do your own research as well into the developer. Correct. Um, developers who have a track record, or obviously a track record of building, are obviously going to be safer than someone who's just started up. And we see that quite often if um, someone who's moved from a different industry into property because they think they can make money. Nothing wrong with that if they perhaps b um, buy in the experience. Mm -hmm. um, stock exchange listed companies are going to be stronger and have more financial clout mm. um, as developers. Yeah. Uh, we've heard a lot about uh, real estate crowdfunding. What should investors be mindful of uh, if they're considering this channel? Crowdfunding is in its very infancy and um, there are now, this, these past two weeks I've had about six or seven press releases of crowdfunding companies starting up all around the world. Um, be aware of what you're investing in and how many people you are investing with because if, if you're one of 200 investing in a villa in Thailand, what are you actually getting? You're certainly not going to get ownership. Um, are you going to get returns? Are you going to get a week every three years? You need to be really sure what you're getting and this goes with any property investment really. Decide from the outset what you want. Do you want a place to retire? Do you want passive income from, from rental? Or do you want capital appreciation? Because where you invest will largely depend on what product and what city you end up investing in. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, I think. Thank you very much for coming in Thank this you. morning. Andrew Batt, the International Group Editor of Property Guru.